Okay, YouTube and uh, Facebookers, this is going to be an interesting video. So, my latest thing's been writing. It actually helps me a lot with uh, stress and also sometimes I have a bit of insomnia. So, it's a great hobby as far as expressing yourself and... Uh, Let's just, I'm going to give you a little taste of the first page of my book that I'm writing. I'm actually about halfway through the book. It's handwritten at this point, so I just started typing it up. And I've been editing and embellishing on all my topics. And I'm sure I'm going to be making lots of changes. But I'm going to be looking for a publishing agent. And I've been looking a bunch up in New York. I want to go on a 10 city tour and I want to see this country. So, I'm going to give you a taste of the beginning of the book. And uh, I'm going to be copying and pasting this bad boy all over the internet. So, hopefully something comes of this. If not, I really enjoy it and I will definitely finish the book no matter what. Alright, so let's get a taste of this book. <coughs> copy. Alright. As of now, this is my title. A Man of the Times. A Diary of the Collapse of Society by Stephen Daniel Yeager. Fall 2014, Halloween Eve. They were gathering at protests and rallies all over the country. Rival factions Mobs and bitter enemies would collide on this night that would be chosen to be the time of battle. Community organizers were now more like gang leaders. Once decent men had grown cold and bitter, anger and desperation was transmitting from, the, from one citizen to another like an airborne flu virus. There were now around seven to ten different political movements. Some had alliances, others were independent. Most cities were now totally bankrupt. What does that really mean when your currency has little to no value any longer? The unions and special interest programs had bled most dry, all while the local leaders raped savings accounts, leaving the public citizens dazed and bewildered. Many police forces were just volunteers because there was no way to pay them. Some still honest, doing their very best to serve and protect us. Others were no better than the scum of the earth, but in this case, they had huge arsenals, weapons, caches, and the training to completely lock down a city and take over whatever or whoever they desired. I watched the chaos unravel on TV with my family. I had forecasted these events to my friends and family members for uh, years. They all agreed I was nuts. Now that shit was hitting the fan. Most were in total panic. But I had, I had literally been dreaming about this for years now. The dreams visited me roughly once a month for the past five years. I dreamed of primitive battles in the streets. People murdering each other with average household items like shovels and kitchen knives. I dreamed of martial law. People being herded like sheep by the police and military. I dreamed of the undead shuffling about my neighborhood at night. The most vivid and haunting dream I had more often than the others. The visions felt so real, like I was being sent warning messages in my sleep. I heard stories of my great-grandmother Curtis being an intuitive. I was starting to believe that this was something we shared in common. I would awake in a state of panic sometimes screaming or thrashing about, swinging my fists, kicking at the sheets in air. Other times, I'd awake in a cold sweat and spring to my feet, so scared and disoriented that I was afraid... Let's see, I lost my chest. I was afraid I could accidentally strike anyone unlucky enough to be in close proximity, or maybe just snap their neck inadvertently. This dream or message that was calling to me began to drive me mad, and the paranoia was starting to affect my work, relationship, and everyday life. 
I was, a com I was compelled to write it down on paper. Maybe there would be some answers for me there. Now this is the dream. I'm riding in the back of an old white pickup truck, no headlights on, thundering down a country road. There are two others in the back of the truck with me, and several large plastic bins. I can see several huge lookout towers in the distance, shining lights beam down upon a huge field. The truck comes to a sudden halt, sliding across the gravel on the side of the road. The two men bolt from the back of the truck with large containers. Not really knowing what is going on, I grab one container, jump out of the truck, and sprint to catch up with the others. The severed head of a man impaled on a fence post made eye contact with me and gave me another boost of adrenaline and fear. We ran into the field frantically as if storming the beach in Normandy. When I catch up with the others, I can see one is digging in the dirt like a crazed animal, clawing at the ground with his bare hands and bloody fingernails to find small potatoes hidden about nine inches under the surface. The other man plucks tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce, and cantaloupes as fast as possible, piling up as much as he can. After about two minutes of raiding the crops, we pick up the containers and sprint back to the waiting vehicle. I twist my ankle horribly and stumble to the ground. I gather my bearings, strugg struggle to my feet, and lumber towards the truck. There is no way in hell I would let them leave me behind, even if my goddamn leg is broken. I will not end up like the man on the fence. As we throw the extremely heavy containers into the truck bed, the last container is secured and then the crack of a single rifle blast echoes through the damp night air. Blood sprays across my face. A moment later, one man drops lifelessly to the ground, like a falling stone, his arm reaching out to me slightly, as if to ask for help. I dive into the back of the truck bed, keeping my head down, praying to Jesus to save me, tears flowing from my eyes like a flash flood. What kind of place is this where only way I can survive is by stealing food, and my life can be taken at any moment as if I was just livestock. This is the reality of food shortages and famine. Men hunting other men like a trophy buck and displaying their prizes on barbed wire fences. I can't get past this dream and the message it was sending me. Now back to the rest of the story. Riots from the larger SF Bay Area cities were erupting all over. Some were there to express their fury and pain with destruction of public property and steal anything that wasn't bolted to the ground. Fires and killings were scattering all about the area. The map on TV looked similar to the Doppler radar that you see on weather reports. The riots began spilling into smaller neighboring cities. Families started barricading their homes and apartments with anything they could scrape up. The anarchist group that was causing most of the havoc and destruction painted their faces white and black with a sinister looking skull design so that they could terrorize the community and not be identified easily. Did this have any connection to my dreams of the undead? The people trying to flee the madness of the city flooded the freeway with a log jam of vehicles. People were running out of fuel and just abandoning their cars and possessions in an attempt to escape the predators that hunt them. The interstate became a clusterfuck of broken down cars and walkers. It was a living nightmare. Irate motorists were mowing people down that wouldn't get out of their way only to find themselves having to retreat on foot as well eventually. A news helicopter captured a video of three men bludgeoning an old man to death with what looked like a crowbar. They just started stomping the life out of him eventually. He was surely dead. They took anything of value he had, including his shoes. People rushed past the murder in progress without paying any attention to the atrocity 
Nobody helped him. From the helicopter cam, you could see the smiling faces of the three showing through their painted skeletal face paint. They celebrated, motioned at, and waved at the helicopter as they raised their middle fingers to the camera, as if to say, fuck the world. They were very pleased with themselves and their brutal dispatching of their elderly victim. It astonished me how the reporter delivered the play-by-play -play on the news. You could hear the excitement and lack of empathy in his voice, like this was his big story of a lifetime. He was such a self-centered piece of shit he was making me sick. I had grown a disdain for most of the media outlets because they'd become opportunistic jackals, scavenging on the misfortunes of others. Almost all of the news organizations were partisan in some form and usually funded by the government or other groups with political influence. When they should be delivering the unbiased facts, they would twist things, basically telling you how to think and live. If you try to discredit or oppose them, they'd attack you personally with ferocity and disdain, labeling, labeling you as stupid or a racist, usually. Okay, that's my little introduction. And uh, I may be dropping a few more pages on you guys here and there. I think this will make for some quality videos. And uh, story time is kind of fun. Uh, all this shit is just kind of some random stuff. There's my tomatoes and potatoes over here. And this is kind of my shit hit the fan bullshit and uh, most of you preppers know all, all about all this crap so thanks for listening take care